Washington offers a block. The blitz comes from the other side. Jaquel Jackson. And now again, Jaquel Jackson. You're listening to Believe in Colts with co-hosts Lawrence Owens and Jaquel Jackson, bringing you the latest and greatest about the shoe. What's going on, Colts Nation? I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, Dequell Jackson. And, man, today's Believe in Colts is going to be about hyping the team up for the rest of the year. I mean, obviously, we got the Texans game coming up. But, man, 6-6, six and six, just like a half a game out of the playoffs. Colts really got to bring their A game the rest of the year. What do you think, Dequell? Yeah, I, I agree. Um Last weekend was a was a slip up. It was one of those games where you need it. It was going to be a, a huge confidence booster, in my opinion. They came up short, but you can get back on track this week against the Texas, a, a team that you beat up the time before, a team that Jonathan Taylor had a huge day. So I'm looking forward to them getting back on track of how they been, how this team has been winning games in the previous you know six or seven weeks, and that was running the football and Carson Wentz putting us in position towards the end of the game. So I'm looking forward to this team get back on track against the Texans for sure. Oh, definitely. And, you know, um, <laughs> I'm just going to drop it in there. Is not a good Go segue. My bad. Uh, bet online, guys. Uh, it, the season's rolling down. We only got about five weeks left of the season. Six weeks, six weeks. My bad. Uh <laughs> <laughs> And if you're into betting, uh, go to check out Bet Online. It remains your number one spot for all your basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus for your first deposit. Uh, just use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive your bonus. Basketball, football, baseball, postseason, NHL, boxing. You know, there's a big boxing uh, match coming up really soon. Take advantage of it if you believe that Frank Gore is going to win that. Um, and then, you know, just remember, if it's your first de deposit, use the promo code BELIEVE50. Bet online. It's where the game starts. Now, the Houston Texans, you talked about it. The Colts need to get back to what they do best, and that is offensively run the damn ball. Yeah, right? You know what? You know what? No, can I? Can I? Can I? To that point, right? And I, I wanted to get this in. It's a horrible segue for me, but I read an article this morning about a conversation that was had on the sideline between Quentin Nelson mm -hmm. and Frank Wright. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes, and that's indicative of what the Hall of Fame guys. I was around last week during that Colts game against the Bucks. How they just would not let it go is like, hey, we need to run the freaking football. And when your leader, like Quentin Nelson, approaches you during the game, and I've done that before, but from an offensive standpoint, when an old lineman, not not the running back himself, not a receiver saying we need to pass the ball, but the guy who blocks and protects and is excited about doing something, you need to, you need, you need to lean into that. And you know what? Frank Wright called direct runs we had a different outcome different Florida game but I just had to bring that up man because I think that's so important of one a head coach listening to his leader a guy who you know arguably is one of the best time, or guards in the in the National Football League so uh yeah that's what we call get back on track and listening to your team maybe he listens maybe he doesn't but against this Texas football team I expect a big dose of Jonathan Taylor Naheem Himes and a small dose of us airing the ball um, out from the passing standpoint. So uh, didn't mean to cut you off, but I had to drop that point in, man. Quentin oh, Nelson it's all is a good. stud, and it was just like something that I wanted to bring it up before I forgot him. I had forgotten about it. Well, uh, to build on what you just said, when, when Quentin Nelson walks up to the head coach, he's in the trenches. He knows how things are going at that point. And he waited right. till that fourth quarter to say, hey, let's start running the football. And that, yeah. that tells me that he knew at that point we can do it. We, right. you know, we got them right. where we want them, you know, whether it's where, where how they're playing their, their, their uh, defensive schemes or 
or whether right. or not the defense was tired or whatnot. But Quentin knew for a fact at that point in the game, they were going to be able to run the football on them. And that's at least that's how I felt that, yeah. that happened. Yeah. I and, mean, it, yeah, the guys, that means he's in tune to what's going on mm-hmm. during the game. A lot of guys who are, who I have a ton of respect for who played this game at a very high level will not even think about approaching a head coach throughout the course of the game. Even though they had the, the they definitely had the credibility to do so, they would have never done it. And for me, it says, you know what? The game is slowed down for Quentin. He understands w- what they do best. And hell, <laughs> Listen, if, if a guy wants to block, it's hard. It, in my opinion, it's much more difficult to sustain blocks uh, running the football from an old lineman standpoint, and it, and the expectation is then to sit back and and kick kick your heels and and block uh, for a pass pro protection. But uh, that's just me. But I, I really I, I loved it. I loved to read that. I, it was refreshing to see that you know guys are in tune with what's going on throughout the course of the game and not just sit back and like, all right, we'll just do what we're told. I like those. I like those guys who are willing to take a chance, you know. Well, that's not the first time Quentin Nelson stood up and said something. I mean, in the off season, it was well reported. Quentin Nelson got mad uh, mm-hmm. during uh, training camp, and there was mm-hmm. some injuries on, on the defensive line, and he got mm-hmm. ticked off that the depth wasn't good enough for him. You know, to right. to be practicing at a high level, yeah. he ran over and started screaming at Chris Ballard, his boss's boss. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. See, you, know? <laughs> you want you want high? You want me to to perform well, and you give me this kind of stuff to practice again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing! That is amazing. I, I, you you want to play with guys like that? The high intensity guys. Hell, he plays with a emo- It's an emotional game. Uh, when you invest so much into it, physically and mentally. So I get it. I, I love that about Quentin Nelson. Absolutely. So I think Quentin's going to get his wish against the Houston Texans because they have one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. I mean, they give up a hundred over 135 yards a game on the ground. On the ground. And wow. Jonathan Taylor's one of those guys. I mean, last time he played against them, 14 carries is all Jonathan Taylor got against the Houston Texans, but he still got over 140 yards and two tugs. <laughs> right. At like a 10 point yard per carry average. Right. <laughs> I mean, so with, with, with that in mind, I would assume you're going to bring, you know, Taylor in the run game a lot more, but at the same time, do you think Lovey Smith is, is going to try to load that box and try, you know, kind of similar to what, uh Tampa Bay did in and, and, mm-hmm. and try to push Reich out of call and run plays. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up because I went back and watched the presser from Frank Wright after the game. And he mm-hmm. talked about a lot of the RPOs actually based on the front you would get will dictate whether or not we're going to run the football or pass the football. And part of the conversation with Quentin Nelson was he specifically asked, can you make a run call? Just a run only call. So obviously you have to be expecting teams to load the box because you have. No one's had a better season from a running back standpoint this year than Jonathan Taylor. Of course, you're going to see a stack box. So how are you going to figure this out? How are you going to still do what you guys do best? And against a loaded box, There, there is no teams are smart as well. Like I always say, they get paid as well. Yeah. They make plays as well. They get paid to come up with brilliant game plans. So they want to force you to be one handed, something that you hadn't been you haven't proven that you can, you know, line up week in and week out and go win football games. But you have proven you can run the football. So how are you going to dictate that now? In my opinion, you add extra O linemen. Uh, either you really load the box um, and. uh you tell everyone you're running the ball with bringing an extra O-lineman, as I just mentioned, or you spread them out, uh, make them thin, make them match your personnel groups. I've said it before, 10 personnel. We have to measure in somehow running quarterback or shotgun runs out of a 10 personnel set. Now, you take your tight ends out, you take the big boys out, but, hell, you at least lighten the load and you let your O-lineman um, go to work. And now you're playing, you know, man on man. And I'll, I'll take my bet against our O-line against any any other opponent's D-line that we can win majority of those matchups. So you got to figure this out if you're Frank Wright. 
you have to. There is no other option. You know, are you just going to say, OK, they gave us an eight man box. We're not going to run the football. We're just going to pass 26 consecutive times. No, that's not the formula that we need to win football games. And we talked about this at length. This team, if you can figure out a way to have success running the football against an eight or nine man front, that that type of football travels. And these next five or six weeks, it's going to be very important that you figure this out because if if the Texans stifle, well, I don't think it's going to happen with the Texans. I think we're going to have a big day running the football. Uh, but the minute you show that you're abandoning the run because of these certain fronts, every team is a copycat league. Every team is going to say, you know what? We get an eight-man front. We got them by the balls. Uh, I probably shouldn't use that term, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> but uh, we we have them where they what we want them. So maybe let's play big boy ball. Who cares if they have an eight man front? Now, obviously, you want to stay committed to it, but um, you know, you have to be in tune to what's going on throughout the course of the game. But I, I do, I, I don't believe you got to beat your head against the wall. If they're stopping you. You're not getting anything. Uh, obviously, you have to, you know, uh, work some other angles or what have you, but. No, I don't say no. Don't abandon the run just because they're showing you an eight-man front. Hell, we got the guys that can do it. Hey, Colts fans! Thanks for watching Dequell and I here on Believe in Colts. While you're at this, please take a moment to smash the like button, hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed, tag that notification bell so that you are notified next time we upload a video or go live, so that you can join in the conversation. Don't forget, you can share this stream. That would help us out a ton. If you enjoy this, share it. All you got to do is go right over here and click the share button, little red share button down here underneath, and share it to your favorite social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever, doesn't matter. Thank you so much. On behalf of myself and Dequel Jackson, have a good one. Enjoy the rest of the show. I, I, I think you're right. And I see, I got another question because uh, I, I was thinking about, you were talking about, you know, setting up design plays to where you know you're spreading them out a little bit what mm -hmm. if you run a 20 or 21 personnel and then naheem yeah. hines who's a receiver you know you motion him out wide and and yeah. then bring a linebacker yeah. out of that box you think that would help out a lot in yeah the yeah that that as well as shifting a lot of shifts now mm -hmm. you go from you know let's say a 21 set or a 12 set and uh, you you start in a spreaded formation where let's go empty and then you shift and now you're in the run um, a run style formation. You can play that game, you know, uh, and now it forces the defense to because a lot of defenses has checks versus empty because no one wants to be in a quote unquote run stopping defense and they've spread everyone out. Now you have to make an adjustment. And so what teams defensive teams usually what happens is okay you have a mass check against an empty set and now when you shift out of it and go back to your original your run formation now the defense has to make a make an adjustment do i stay in this in the my my new you know um check or do i go back to my original call typically they stay in their their their, their check against an empty set and now it allows them to be a lot softer against the run and that's another way you can attack it um I remember back in the day, the Jets used to use, do it a lot. They used to shift out of formations and into empty, and it would just completely screw us up. So I haven't seen much of that from from our team, but that's something that can you know combat to you know these eight man fronts. Yeah, that's and sometimes I think you just gotta feed it through the teeth of the defense. You know, I you yeah. just have to at, at yeah. times. You you don't want to you know run into a brick wall all the time. But right. let's face it, I mean, against loaded boxes, Jonathan Taylor was better against loaded boxes than he was mm -hmm. against, uh, you know, not loaded boxes. Where, right. you know, right. uh, against an average box or less, mm -hmm. he was averaging 5.8 yards a carry. Against yeah. a against seven plus man boxes, he was averaging six point eight yards per carry. Right, you know and, why, right? Yeah, you know why, right? Because well, it, everybody's in there, Every, right. and and he's got that ability that once he gets mm -hmm. through that first level of defense, he's got the right. speed to go. Right, right, no doubt, and it, everything declares, everything is declared a lot easier and sooner for your offensive line, and he has the speed to 
when he gets through the mesh, now it's a one-on-one tackle with the free safety in the secondary. And hey, we're going to win that battle more times than not. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I do think at some point, obviously, I don't want to sit up here and say oh, we got to run the ball no matter what for fifty straight times, and they they're putting everyone in the box. At some point, Carson Wentz and this throwing uh, this passing attack has to come to life. You know, they get paid as well. They're talented as well. Mm-hmm. So, but the strength of this team is running the football. And if we can somehow scheme up a way to get Jonathan Taylor through, listen, Quentin Nelson, we we said it. I mean, they're committed to it. They want to do it. So when you have that type of energy, you got to feed into it. You got to you got to change some things around. And, and if Quentin Nelson, Quentin Nelson is leading that charge, I'm sure he's bringing everyone else along. We have to run the football. He's talking for Jonathan Taylor. He's speaking for Carson Wentz. You know, uh, he's been that vocal leader in that sense. But um, against the Texans, I there's not a doubt in my mind they're going to have any trouble running the football. Uh, but I do think Frank Wright, this is the time. I think they're going to win big. I do think Frank Wright, he has some tricks up his sleeves. Let's, let's, let's make it difficult for the Patriots. Uh, you're going to have, after this game, you're going to have a bye week to prepare for the Patriots. You're going to have more than enough time to to game plan. For me, I would like to see something outside of the norm that breaks the tendency because, you know, we have the greatest coach on the other side. I hate to look ahead, but you're going to have the, the greatest coach, that, one of the greatest coaches to ever coach the game, watching your tendencies and studying you. So mm-hmm. give them one more thing to, 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 to study up on. So, uh, but I do think this game is going to be a cakewalk. I really do. So after the Bills game, Colts fans, mm-hmm. a lot of Colts fans seem to think that the Indianapolis Colts should just run the ball 50, 60% of the time on offense every game, yeah. all game, yeah. all year long. You know, that that's how yeah. you win the game. Don't don't let Carson throw more than 12 times mm-hmm. a game, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that, that 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 type of situation. And let, let let's be let, let's be frank and honest about this. Yeah. No matter what, you could have the greatest running backs in history. Uh, they only have four or five games a season where they have that oh my goodness games, right? Yeah. At max. Yeah. That's generally, yeah. you know, that that 150 to 250 yard games where they just completely take over a game right. and it, it's it's done. No matter how many times you hand them the football, generally right. it's four <laughs> or five times. Uh, you know, and the rest of the time, you got to be either fairly balanced or be very good at passing the football. So, right. I mean, you just can't say run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. You know, right. Like, right. like like you said, the, the we pay these guys as well. We just gave up without any question. It's going to be a first round pick now for Carson Wentz. Uh, right. Michael Pittman right. is out there. We got our tight ends. We got some right. other guys on. All, we got T. Y. Hilton. You know. We got receivers and even even Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines, they catch the ball out of the backfield too. Right. We right. gotta lean on that passing game occasionally because right. you don't want we talk about being one dimensional, mm-hmm. you know, forcing a team to only run the football also is still being one dimensional and makes it easier for <laughs> right. defense. Right, right. A balanced attack is what this team has to figure out. Uh, figure out a healthy balance between the two. You get the grunting game going early. You stay committed to it. Obviously, that opens everything up down the field. And now you have big targets like, you know, uh, Pittman Jr. Uh, comes into play. Ty, you know, last game we didn't talk about. He hit a milestone over 9,500 receiving yards, which is a huge nice. feat yeah. in the National Football League. So uh, I do think the balance attack is the necessary way of going. They're not this, you know, they're not the Bucks. Then they don't have all these different targets everywhere. They're not an all-star team where you can close your eyes and throw the ball up and Michael Evans is going to come down with it or, or, or Goodman, you know, you're not, we're not built like that. We don't have those guys, but we do have a opti- uh, a defense that leads the league in turnovers. Um, we do have an aggressive defense uh, when they, 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 they make timely stops when necessary. I would say that. And they feed off of what we do offensively. I do think, you know, Carson Wentz is definitely playing really good football. I just, I just don't know at times, man. I just, I just, mm-hmm. this team is just, 
I've already lost my hair, man. They, they, they're killing me right now. You know, it's like you get lose so your beard next. Yeah, I'm gonna lose my. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> that's that's my saving grace. You know, I just you know this team is giving me just so much. Just oh, it's just they're so close. They're so close at times, and you just the way they played the defending champions last week. They should have won that football game, in my opinion, but they should have won a lot of football games uh, that they were into. And mm -hmm. I talked about it last week. The really good football teams find a way, and they just haven't been able to find their way towards the end of football games to beat quality opponents. But now, listen, the Texans, this is a game. I don't know anyone that's given the Texans any chance to win this football I think game. The Colts are nine last, and a half point favorites. Yeah, they gave up five sacks last week. <laughs> against the Jets football team. They gave up over 130 yards on the ground last week. Uh, so, you know, this this is the writing on the wall where you, you, you can't overlook them as a player because you're looking towards maybe that week off of the bye week, yeah. which we'll talk about maybe, or you're looking at the Patriots down the road because you're on the outside looking into this playoff hunt. So, but I do think they will be focused. I do think they will be focused because if you're looking at this schedule, you know you have, you know, from the, the start of the Buffalo game, you knew you were going to have your, your work cut out in these upcoming weeks. So I do think that is a that will be a, a easier shift to to go out and dominate early in this football game. So you're still Christmas shopping, right, Dequal? It doesn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> for those of you who are still christmas shopping and trying to find that perfect gift let me tell you about lightbox lightbox uses cutting edge technology and innovative techniques and they've cracked the science of sparkle creating the highest quality lab grown diamonds you can find they have the same chemical makeup as natural diamonds but are grown in a lab because of the process, they can create stones in a plush pink or a beautiful blue, as well as your classic white. Lightbox grown diamonds are the gift that they'll never want to take off and priced so they won't have to. Uh, just visit lightboxjewelry.com to add sparkle to your holiday shopping. That's lightboxjewelry.com. Never a dull moment. Okay, Tyrod Taylor. We didn't get to play against Tyrod Taylor in the first time we mashed up against the Texans this uh, uh, this year. It was Davis Mills, and Davis had himself a game against the Colts. He, really he was did. 29 of 43, 243 yards. Now, he did throw two interceptions. But he's still, you know, 29 of 43, 243. That's a, that's a yeah. uh, moving the ball very, very well against, against this Indy defense. Do you what are you seeing uh, from Tyrod Taylor, and how are the Colts going to have to play him defensively? Yeah, I think you got to you have to use a, a similar strategy as we went into the Josh Allen week. He's a mobile guy. Last week, he you know the the Texans gave up five sacks against a guy that's pretty mobile. I think you got to go into this game. Thinking to, to keep him in the pocket, we're going to have some chances uh, behind the line of scrimmage to get him down. Um, but, you know, Tyrod Taylor is a savvy vet. He's been around this game for a very long time. He's more than capable of winning a football game if you give him the ability to and you give him easy reads, uh, a lot of pre-snap reads. Uh, you, you definitely have to, you know, whatever disguise you have built in the calls, you have to utilize those because, again, he's been around this league for a very long time. And if he needs to, uh, his his escapability is is still above par than most NFL quarterbacks nowadays. So you got to take that approach. I think we we're going to be highly overmatched for those guys. But again, it's still a division game. These two teams are very familiar with each other, so you can't walk into it uh, lightly. Uh, but I I I, I do think Tyrod Taylor, it won't be enough just him alone. And him escaping and making plays on with his legs won't be enough to overcome what our defense is able to do with turning the ball over and just making, you know, timely stops when necessary. Well, it's Friday. We're recording on a Friday. And so we got two days of injury report to go over. And look, mm -hmm. the, to be fair, there was a lot of people that did not practice on Wednesday. But when you right. have, you know, nagging injuries, generally they don't. 
Right. Uh, I'm looking at our injury report, and I'm I'm not seeing anyone who did not practice yesterday at all. And that's they'll right. probably be full practices today. So right. that's great. Right. But for the Houston Texans, oh my goodness, uh, th- th- this is this looks like the Indianapolis Colts week two. Okay, uh, it really does. Dami and Amendola has not practiced yet this week. Terrence wow. Brooks, the the defensive back, has not practiced this week. Chris okay. Connolly, Brandon Cooks, Brandon David Cook. Johnson, uh, these guys, wow. none of them. Uh, their defensive lineman Demarcus Wa- uh, Walker. Uh, did not practice this week. They've got so many DNPs <laughs> on their uh, on on their list that it's it's just I, it makes me wonder. Mm-hmm. There's no way the Colts should lose this game. Not not with that amount of injuries. And we're as you said, we're already overmatching them. But it is a divisional game, and you <laughs> right. can never ever walk into a divisional game and go, "We got this in the bag." Look at week right. one versus Jacksonville last year. The Colts <laughs> got beat bad, you know, against Jacksonville. So, <laughs> right. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, that that's not looking good for the, the Houston Texans. They they have enough issues being two and nine, not really winning a ton of games. It's towards that part of the season, Lawrence, where you know those nagging injuries start to affect you and affect your style of play, and you know whether or not you're available or not. And really, with a two and nine record, no one's more motivated to play through injury now because you're not when doesn't you don't see anything down the line other than you know when the last game is here and you plan your vacation wherever you're going to go. So yeah. uh, trust me, I know about that all too well. But uh, yeah, that, that's just they, they're going to be over Matt. Even with all those guys available, I, I still don't think that they, they're going to have enough firepower because the the tech. The, Here's the difference. The Colts are actually playing for something. Mm-hmm. Meaning, they're playing meaningful football in the early parts of December. That goes a long way. Injuries, availability, uh, just your psyche about the season. On the Texans, on the other side of the ball, like I said, there's not much to really play for in terms of why you play the game. Are you going to give it your best effort week in and week out? And unless this you're team, in a contract year. <laughs> right, unless you're in the contract year. And this team from the beginning of the season uh, with the Deshaun Watson situation has been playing left-handed, you know, mm-hmm. in, in a sense. They, they're, they're just they're, – they're, just, they're, they're lucky enough to compete, you know, but I really think that they're going to steamroll steamroll these guys. I don't think it's going to be close at all. So, yeah, you uh, like I said earlier, right now the books got it nine and a half point uh, – underdogs to the Colts. Do you think the Colts cover that? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I think they win by at least three touchdowns. I really do. I think they it's not even close because again, they're in the thick of this tough stretch of football and these guys, their mind, listen, they beat Buffalo, manhandled Buffalo. They they played, you know, the Bucks to the very end. It came down to the last throw. Uh we talked about you know, earlier in the season playing, you know, uh, against they lost the game, but they played quality opponents and should have been could have won some of those games. So they understand this is the, every this is a one game season from here on out. And mm-hmm. the Texans are caught in the middle of all of this and they're going to get the wrath of the Colts. And because they, they want to get that that stink off their shoulders from last week, not being able to to to, to beat Tom Brady in Newing or in Indianapolis uh, and the defending defend the champs. So that gave, I, I look at that last week game, it, they, they came away from that with a lot of confidence. You know, heck, anytime you play a defending Super Bowl champions to the last throw, uh, it's going to give you confidence, and especially, and the Texans, unfortunately, are in the way right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this channel is proudly sponsored by the Backroom Collection. They do beautiful sports canvas art with football basketball, baseball, and other sports themes. Special orders are accepted and autograph pieces are available. Many Indianapolis Colts signed pieces will be available beginning in November. Just use your discount code CL10 to purchase the pieces you want to spice up your living area. That's CL10. I'm I'm getting... uh, And you have the bye week to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. You have have the bye week. I I think the players and coaches... 
are probably as sick as the Colts when it comes to moral victories, right? Yeah. You yeah. can only say, well, we we could be nine and three right now so many times. Right. I right. <laughs> right. legitimately right. we we, we could have beat the Rams, could have. Right. Could have right. beat the Ravens, could have. Could have beat right. Tampa Bay, could have. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. could have beat the Texans, could have. Could have, right. could have, would have, should have been ten and two, but right, right, no, we're right. six and six, six, uh, and, six. And, and and now it's time for the Indianapolis Colts to put up or shut up, really. Yeah, yeah, and and I tell you this: if I'm a head coach, if I'm a coach on that team, I'm trying to take the temperature. I want to get the temperature of my team right now because I entice them with, hey, if we win this game, you know, the way we think we should win this game. I'll give you a week off. And if we don't, then you know what? We're going to be in the building. You'll get two days off. We'll be in the building. And, you know, it, it'll be what it is. But, yeah, I'll play that game with them because as a former player, that bye week, everyone looks forward to that bye week. And where this bye week falls into play is, you said it earlier, it isn't the early part. Of, it isn't the first quarter of the season. This is taking place on the back end of the season. And guys are looking forward to some time off. You know, it's near the holidays. You can catch up on your Christmas shopping. Uh, you can just step away to recharge the batteries. You know, uh, uh, get some guys healthy. Right now, we, as you alluded to, we had a we had a full roster of guys to work with in practice. You know, let's let's keep that momentum. Let's have our guys fresh and available you know, going into an important game against the Patriots and so forth. So this bye week, I know a lot of guys are looking forward to it. And you have the Texans? Oh, let's go out here and put up 40 points if we can. Do you really? Do, do, do coaches honestly do stuff like that? Like say, you know what, if we win this game by three scores, such and such will happen? Here's how they will do it. If you have a leadership council, right? This is how it's happened with me before. You have a leadership council, maybe – I don't know, 10 guys or so. And everyone wants to know what the schedule will be for the bye week. You talk about, typically you talk about the, you know, you plan ahead, a few weeks ahead. And so he may not flat out say, hey, you went by three touchdowns, I'll give you a week. But he's like, hey, if we go out here and take care of business the way we should take care of business, and we all know what that means, then I'll consider giving you guys a week off. And when that happens, the leaders walk in the locker room and everyone's everyone wants to know what the schedule will potentially be. And it kind of permeates through the locker room. Hey, this is the deal. If we go ahead and take care of business, he'll give, he'll give us a see you Wednesday, you know, a victory Monday. And in this case, an an entire week off. So absolutely. It definitely, they may not flat out tell you, but they know that, you know, they know their team, they know how to get the message out and And it works. Yeah. Another way of, of really doing that uh, to help establish that is, frankly, running the ball because there's nothing more demoralizing <laughs> than getting ran over uh, early right. in the game, right? Like, right for a defense, right. if you can't stop the running back in the first quarter and you're already two and nine, you know, right. and the running right. back is popping 10 yards of carry on you in the right. first quarter, uh, right. that's you you you're, you're going to take their will completely out of the game for the uh whatever they had left, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and that memory pops in your head, oh, we're 2 and 9, here we go again. They're starting to have some success running the ball, they're scoring. Now let's just hold on. You know, subconsciously you you know, you go through that and you have to fight against that and that's why, you know, you have to jump on a team that's 2 and 9 a division game. You have to jump on them early. You have to get a lead early to put them in that place of here we go again, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it's going to be very important, you know, uh, how the Colts come out, because if, if you give the Texans a familiar divisional opponent any life, uh, you start to give them confidence. And, you don't you don't need this becoming a, fo- a closer ball game than what it has to be. You need to go out here and, and dominate at an early standpoint as early and often as you can. I'm going to hate bringing up bad memories about uh, playing on losing teams. But my (laughs) question is, does – when when it comes to late in the season and you're on a team that is like two and nine or something like that and and you're walking into games, does pride – have an effect on how you play or, or is that a lesser, lesser uh, extent? 
Does pride have pride? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So it depends on your leadership, right? If you have a young football team, they don't know how to work themselves through this and guys may tend to go out a little bit more, probably not tend to do a little bit of extra after practice, whether it be catching balls or watching film, or, you know, if you had a situation where on Fridays, the defense will go over a certain amount of plays that could potentially hurt you all. You stop doing the things that you, you were doing at the beginning of the season. Uh, but yes, pride does play a part. And if you're, and if you have the right leadership, you're telling guys, Hey, listen, yeah, we may be two and nine. We don't have a future in the playoffs, but you best believe the other 31 teams are going to evaluate our season. And mm-hmm. if you stand out, whether it be here or someplace else, you're on a job interview every time you step on the field. So if you can compartmentalize all of that and understand the bigger picture of it, obviously that, that pride comes into play. Most guys play with pride. You can't play this game without pride, but you know, not giving the right leadership. That's why leadership is so imperative in any locker room, especially so now. Um, and I'm glad you brought up though that th- this memory, because in Cleveland, I go back to my Cleveland days, my first year ever playing there, I had a guy by the name of Willie McGinnis, Super Bowl champion. Yeah. And the things he did, the habits he did and created at the beginning of the season were exactly like the end of the season. And so he was a lot. So I followed his lead. And so I knew how to, when he left and when I was in that position, I knew how to get through those tough moments of just becoming, you know, just a, just obsessed with the process. So that some guys don't see it that way. Some guys just wake up, hey, we're two and nine. I'm not going to watch any film once I leave the building, you know, and you start to develop bad habits. And this is what a two and two and nine team has developed. They have a too many guys with bad habits, you know, and you don't have enough guys with great habits to get them out of this 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 stench, this this slump. So uh, it's a it's it's definitely uh, not a pleasant environment to be in uh it, it's definitely that's the part i don't miss i don't miss that at all but you look at the Colts; those guys are energized they're ready to go play uh they know what they need to do in order to win football games when we talk about um you know how losing games can affect and how winning games can affect at the current situation the Colts are in right now six and six they're on that teeter-totter right mm-hmm. they they're, they're right there and if if the Colts win like they're supposed to, they're going to yeah. go into this this uh, this bye week and be like, "All right, we have hope. We could, you know, have a shot at making the playoffs." If we, you if they lose to the Texans, the swing, I think, you know, would Ooh. be so dramatic yeah. in, in in how you feel about yourself and how the fans would feel about. It. Yeah, yeah. Th- these are the type of games. If you were to lose, now you're talking about someone being fired. <laughs> yeah, it, it becomes that drastic. It, it gets that drastic. It's like, wait, what? Wait, what? What? What happened? You know, when you lose the bad football teams, you know, now you start to overanalyze things, and and it could get dicey really quick. And I don't see that in this football team. But if it were to happen, and it could, because they are division opponents, they know mm-hmm. each other very well. Um, that's why I go back to what I said earlier. You have to command a big lead and take control of this game early early and as often as you can because if that were to happen yeah i don't want to be yeah there's going to be a different conversation next week (laughs) i can promise you that it will be you know you're talking about people being fired you're talking about what are we doing now everyone's taking the bulk of the blame and uh, it's just not a good uh environment to be in at that point yeah, that's the whole reason of why the loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers didn't hurt me nearly as bad when I looked at the bigger picture because it was a non-conference, non-divisional game. You right. know, it, it only counts as, in my opinion, like half a game, right? right. Whereas, right. you know, a divisional game, that's a two-game, you know, right. play. Right. So, uh, can't lose those. Can't lose no, those. You, we've, you, already, you have... we've already lost twice to the Texans. We got to sweep right. the other two teams. Right, right. And every team in training camp says the same thing before you make the playoffs. You have to win your division. These are the games that matter. 
win win within your division. You know, those are the games that matter. And uh, you know, we're we're in the. I still think we're we're not in a. We still can control our somewhat of our our you know what our season will look like after in January for that matter. But you have to go out here and take care of business. The Texans. They're going to fight. They're going to show up. They're going to be, you know, energized for the game early on. But again, when you punch a little brother in the mouth, after you've punched him in the mouth a few times, he remembers like, oh, OK, this is what it's about. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they got to they got to come out swinging. The Colts have to come out swinging and punch the Texans in the mouth and get them off of them. And so they can get things rolling, get that energy back, get Quentin Nelson you know, on the sideline, not even thinking about talking to the coach because they're running the heck out of the football. Jonathan Taylor is getting back on track. You know, let, let's. this is the game to do it. But you cannot neglect the fact that this team understands who you are and they want to beat you as well. Because if you look at the, you know, I, I remember when I was there, um, the Texans hadn't beat the Colts in the Colts, you know, building and, you know, God knows how many years. And, uh, but yeah, you know, hopefully T.Y. comes alive. You know, we've this been waiting This is an on NRG him. stadium game. Yeah, yeah. He he he's definitely has a history of putting up big numbers against the Texans. So, and I'd like to see him finish this season off on a good note. He's He's been, you know, part of the game playing the last uh, game or so. So I'd like to see him get a nice stretch of healthy games so he can make his impact and mark on this team moving forward. Now, one thing that they cannot do, is turnovers. Uh, I yeah. just straight don't give the yeah. Texans chances to come back in this game mm-hmm. in any way, mm-hmm. shape, or form. Got to yeah. protect the football. I, I, that was an aberration, in my mm-hmm. opinion, of what we saw this past Sunday against Tampa. It's not something that right. has been indicative with this Indianapolis Colts team this year. Right. And we can't let it become a thing. Right. right. And, yeah. And, and that goes to just your, your level of focus, you know. As much as we talk about they should win this game, the players the players know it too. They're saying, I was like, hey, we're going to put up big numbers. You know, we, we we know the teams that we can put up big numbers on. And, you know, that's if that would have happened at, you know, right now this week is about focus. It's about focus, doing the little things. You got to harp on that as the season progresses because, as, you know, when you have pride, that's part of that whole pride conversation, doing those little things and not neglecting them because when you start to neglect them now things that we talk about you not playing as well as you had hoped and against an opponent that you you very much muchly so out outnumber outmatch so um but i, I don't think that's gonna happen with this team i, I think frank rice gonna have these boys ready to play and uh you know again because they're in the thick of this this tough stretch that's either going to you know, decide whether or not postseason is a is in their future. So I got a question for you, a little bit away from the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you thinking so far of this hard knocks uh, in season thing? I man, I love hard knocks. I love it, man. I love it. It gives you an inside scoop on just an inside view of just how the operation of football goes. It gives just aside from all the different characters and what takes place. Uh, it gives for me watching. I look at it from a different perspective because I was a former, because I am a former player. It gives the casual fan that that understanding of meeting times and practice times and 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 you know all the work you have to do on your body, and the the grits and grinds of the game. So I, I appreciate that part of it. And it just you know I like re- when I see things. It reminds me of oh I remember when I was there and doing blah 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 and with blah blah blah. So. Um, I enjoy it, man. I really do enjoy the hard knock life. Right, hard knocks, brother. When 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 they have cameras on and uh the you you see their, you know, how they're kind of not not you know their practice or anything like that, but you know, they're mm-hmm. they're talking about talking up the game during the week and then during the game, and then right. you know, how, how they feel after a game, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Uh I would think that that would even put a little bit more motivation on that team to succeed because yeah. of, you know, it's not just a nationally broadcast game, right? but their entire preparation and, 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 yeah. and what goes on in the building before the game, during the game and after the game, 
is mm-hmm. also brought, you know, on a national level with the the hard knocks too. Yeah, yeah. And on another side of it, it could be for guys who are not familiar with cameras being everywhere. It could be a little tricky because you're not trying to, you don't want to give your secrets because you know teams uh-huh. like the Patriots <clears throat> are probably watching. you know so you don't want to give all your secrets out and you have to be discreet in that in that regard so um you know it it could be a little tricky but i thought it was unusual that you would have it in the middle of your season right that that to me is a lot different than training camp training camp you have different bodies different players and now you get an inside scoop of the guys who are actually playing and what they think of the game and you have, you know, your one-on-one time with them. And um, it's great from a fan perspective, but as a, from a player, me just thinking about, you know, all the, all the things that you have to deal with, you know, meetings and, and you don't have any space. It feels like there's no, there's no privacy, Yeah, but uh, they seem to be working through it, but you know. I, I do want to we'll give see. the Colts a little bit of props. They have been on the cutting edge of kind of being that, you know, clear, you know, show you more than what other teams right. do normally. For years now, you know, they've had the with the next pick thing going on. Last yeah. couple of years, they initiated that. Now other teams are starting to do it. Right. Um, they started giving content creators like myself, um, mm-hmm. you know, press conferences for, for just specifically that. And right. now, you know, it's a first for a team to actually be like, all right, we're going to film what's going on during the season. You know, that, so the Indianapolis Colts has just been on, on top of it when it comes to just giving the fans stuff that they want. Right. And and I want to go back to a point of just, if I could try to put my player helmet back on and, Mm -hmm. and try to relive what actually like in meetings, like Lawrence, between you and I, if if you're the defensive coordinator, you're going over things, and you know there's a there's a huge dialogue going on. You know, hey, what if we do blah blah blah, and the defensive coordinator is talking, the, the linebacker coach may say something, or the secondary, and at times like the players, hey, you know, Darius Butler, what do you think if we, you know, you know, try this a different way? It's a lot of communication going on. Um, obviously, they're not going to show all of that, but. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's probably a little tricky. It's like, okay, when can I say what I want to say? You have to make sure cameras on around. And uh-huh. again, because, uh, you know, I, I, I guarantee you other teams are watching it during the season. They have a guy, a scout, specifically watching it. I'm sure the Patriots have someone watching it to see if they, they're going to give any tips or, or about their tendencies or, or their approach to uh, an upcoming game. I'm I'm thinking that the that they probably have some sort of arrangement where HBO probably has cameras everywhere and record everything. Right. Right. But anything that is broadcast has to go through the Colts organization first, right? right. They're like, right. no, 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 no. You're not gonna talk. You're you're not gonna, you know. Right. And that adds another <laughs> level of you have to prepare for uh I'm sure they have people not to but the coach has to be included in some regard mm-hmm. because he doesn't want to give out schematic secrets. Yeah. You know, so, and that adds another level of preparation, another something else that takes you away from game planning. And have you seen, have you seen uh, this past week's hard knocks? I have, I saw uh, the second one. The second yeah, one? I haven't seen, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen the, uh, oh, okay. well, the latest, the latest. I haven't seen the latest. The, the late oh man you gotta watch it because there's a there's a part in it i'm sorry for cutting you off but there's a no, part no. in it where darius leonard's walking in the building he's got his head down you know texting people you know and he just uh-huh. walks right into the wall <laughs> <laughs> it's like he looks up and says Did anyone? and then he looks right at the camera oh, this is gonna be on our knocks ah and he just starts laughing hey. it off and walking on <laughs> yeah man it's, it, those, those early mornings oh man <laughs> Those early mornings because you have to get that last text out before you know meet and start because you don't you got to put your phone down you don't have yeah. time to respond. Oh no, that's bad. It bad. That, that, it's always good humor. I'm sure 
they probably have so much footage. Obviously, they have so much footage they're not showing that oh, yeah. they probably would down the road someplace. But uh, that that would be interesting. That would that would be fun. I've never been a part of any hard knocks, but uh, I can see how that could be pretty entertaining. I can tell you what: if hard knocks was around when Pat McAfee was a player <laughs> and that whole mob, so on Fridays like today, uh, obviously it's a short practice, right? And guys, uh, guys just get energized because you know you're out of the building before one o'clock. You know, you're going to be out. You can start your Friday, get your, you know, you have family in town or or whatever the case may be. And so in our locker room, uh, we had a freestyle Friday. We had a guy that literally had like a, this karaoke type machine and he would rap. And other guys, they would battle each other. So it became this freestyle Friday on this side of the locker room. Then on the other side of the locker room, you had Andrew Luck, the O-line and like me and Pat were in the middle. We were like divided. And so you would spend time over here. All the jokes are being told over here and rapping and music and all. And over here was a lot more quiet. You know, Andrew didn't like all that fuss, you know, so he was he was quiet, you know, over here. But uh, if Hard Knocks was around during those days, oh, my goodness, it would be. Oh, my God. I can only imagine. I can did, only imagine. Did, did did Andrew Luck ever play cornhole? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Was oh yeah. We all, I, honestly, I probably. So when he was, when his meetings broke, uh -huh. like my, like our, our meetings kind of overlapped each other. So like the defensive meetings would get out sometimes earlier. Offense will be on a different time clock. And I've seen him throw the beanbag a couple of times, but uh, yeah, we would always, I mean, you talk about Betty. Oh man. Yeah. It was a lot of, a lot of uh, interesting, uh, a lot of interesting characters in that in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> Cornhole end up be, you know losing a couple hundred dollars and in a matter of minutes, you know. Wow. So it, it was it was fun, man. It was fun. I that, that that part I do I do miss just the randomness about it, you know. <laughs> and we didn't spend much time in the lock, you know, a normal day. You're in the, you're in the locker room. When meetings start, you're in a locker room, maybe, I don't know. The longest time you're in the locker room is right before practice starts. And that's probably give you probably 10, 15 minutes. Other than that, it's like five minutes here, five minutes there. And then within five minutes, all hell could break loose. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> all right. Well, we're running. We're about at the end of this. Uh, this time. Is there anything else you want to? uh finish off with before we go no no man uh i think i'm good to go we covered everything it's gonna be interesting to see how they come out and play and heading into this bye week uh it's gonna you know it's gonna it's gonna be the the tale of this season how they respond against the uh texans here i'm looking forward to a, a blowout honestly yeah every time the colts lost uh ever since the ravens game every time the colts lost they come back and just put a beat down on whatever team it was that they were playing. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we'll see that uh, happen again and time repeats itself. But uh, until next time, thank you everybody for watching Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. That's Dequal Jackson. And as usual, go Colts. Colts.